Hi there. This summer, I have noticed that canned wines are popping up everywhere. So when I was offered the opportunity to have a chat with Henry Connell, one of the winemakers behind one of the UK's newest canned wines, The Uncommon, I couldn't resist. The Uncommon is certainly a game changer. The quality of the wine in the can is the best wine in a can that I have tasted so far. But also, The Uncommon is English wine in a can. All the grapes are grown in sustainable vineyards in the south of England. So, whether you love them or you have reservations about them, wine in cans are here to stay. The format certainly has its advantages. Being just for one, these cans are very useful for outdoor summer picnics, um, camping, festivals. Another plus is that they are good for making cocktails. And I have one for you. Stay watching at the end of this video to watch Christos at the Coral Room make the Kochi Rosé designed specifically to showcase the new rosé from the common. Of course, I had to taste it for myself. So as usual, please remember to give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button to keep up with the goings on on Wine Using TV. There is plenty more to come. Cheers! The idea initially came, so I lived in New York for seven years. It's a billion dollar industry in the US. It started in you know, California, Oregon, Washington. And when I was moving to London, uh, England became very well known for uh, sparkling wines and aromatic whites and rosé whites. So I figured why not stop doing my boring office job um, and bring the concept to the UK. It had never been done before, so I figured I'd bring it over here. So I went to Plumpton University, I studied viticulture, studied enology, then did internships at Night Timber at Hattingley Valley, um, and then worked about um, establishing partnerships with grape growers and winemakers and canners to start the Uncommon. Um, and the bankers seemed like a good place to start because it's a, it grows very well, it's a German grape, but it grows very well in England. Um, early ripening, ripens very well, it's quite resistant to, to, uh, to mildew and rot. Um, and frost resistant, um, and I actually think the taste of the taste of um, Bacchus is quite English. It's quite elderflowery. It's quite floral, blossomy. Um, so yeah, seems like a logical place to start. The, the road is twenty. It's eighty-one percent Pinot Noir, nineteen percent Pinot Meunier. I think the, the tag is certainly something that we shouldn't shy away from. I think there has been a, a natural movement um, towards small things craft. We saw it in beer 10 years ago, so the natural progression in wine makes sense. Um, so I think those people that are doing stuff that don't own, don't own their own land, it makes sense for them to, uh, to, to take on that label. So we make the wines, so we have our own vines in Kent, um, we have another vineyard in Hampshire and, and Surrey. The UK wine industry is also dominated by a handful of wealthy families and individuals. So to actually own land, to own big expensive wineries, uh, to manage vineyards um, is very cost prohibitive. So if you want to get into the industry uh, and you're a younger, more adventurous winemaker, then your only route to the market is doing something that is more small scale, more craft and uh, more urban. We have, we have a very young, very adventurous, curious audience in London, for example, so it makes sense for urban wineries to exist. I think it's really important. I mean, our, our goal here, I mean, part of the reason we're doing it in this format is because we believe in the sustainability of the format. 
Um, unfortunately, it's very hard to grow organic grapes in the UK because we don't have the climate to support it. Um, but we do only work with farmers that have um, more sustainable more sustainable farming techniques. They're not, they're not spraying fertilizers, pesticides, they only do it when it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. But the reason we've chosen this format is because it's, and I think we'll probably come on to it a bit, but we talk about this packaging, for example, the material we have used is all recycled. So these are recycled corks um, to make our straps, and this is recycled cardboard. Um, this way we can shelf the illustration, we can use little material, and the material we have used is all come from recycled. Um, it's, all, it's all recycled. All recycled. Um, so who would it be? It would be it'd probably David Attenborough. Okay. Around a fire um, with a kind of some kind of uh, smoky New World Cabernet Sauvignon. So I personally find the whole um, climate change and sustainability. Uh, message has been confused by media, by paid for research. And so I'd love to talk to someone like him about like what have you seen firsthand? Like what are what are the actual human impacts of climate change? What are we doing and what can we do to actually change it? Like we want to go, we want to figure out how we from literally the the planting of the grape to where it's consumed and what can we do as a business to make sure that we're doing everything we can. Uh, to be as sustainable and as environmentally forward-thinking as possible.